I'm Annika Söder. I am from Sweden and I am a member of the board of the new foundation uh, Principles for Peace. I'm Beat Kundus. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm Teresita Quintos Deles from the Philippines. I'm Juan Diaz Prince. I'm the acting director for Inclusive Peace Processes and Reconciliation at the United States Institute of Peace. And we're here at USIP to present the principles and hopefully make them stick. People are not speaking the same when they say, what is peace? For some, peace is just the absence of violence. For others, they want to participate in their own peace processes, but they can't. Identifying a common language that allows us to ensure that the people struggling in their conflicts are at the center of the conflict resolution processes is an important common language to create. Peace is what is about life of people on the, on, in communities. Peace is whether they are able to go to school, they're able to uh, earn a living, uh, they're able to dream dreams. Um, so the principles for peace is helping to put a new frame that will revitalize the search for peace. We have to rethink peace. Uh, it is the most important to, to talk about peace in a time that we have these problems. It's a proposition. It's maybe a radical proposition, but it's definitely not impossible. And we believe these principles around dignity, humility, legitimacy, subsidiarity can really assist people to create hope, not only hope in their minds, but also hope politically for change. This can be a tool for people affected by conflict to hold their leaders accountable. It may sound naive that now we would come up with principles that are close to uh, the human being, but we need to do that to avoid uh, that the militarization of the world takes over fully and contributes to more and more violence. Peace is the way it is. It is, it is affected by decisions of people who sit in conference rooms, uh, who hold power for their states, who hold power for multilateral agencies. There is the work of bringing about a political consensus among those actors. But there's also the very needed um, operationalization um, that needs to happen on the ground. How do you really make these principles uh, real, uh, a living thing, a lived thing um, among the people on the ground? So the, those are uh, two particular um, challenges and the need of course, to be able to measure them. I think issues around legitimacy, making sure that the peace process doesn't fall down once it's signed by armed groups and an elite, but has an implementation around these principles which we can measure, around which we can organize a coalition, that makes a difference in the real world. What's important to do is to have a checklist of these principles and put them in the hands of the special envoys, put them in the hands of diplomatic actors, put them in the hands of peace builders, and, and lead reflection exercises that say, are we doing this? Or are we pretending to do this? Are we just saying inclusion or diversity, but actually we just want an elite bargaining agreement? So just asking people, what you're doing about this motivates them to think through and come up with an answer. And those answers tend to be more concrete. Everyone that really wants to support people uh, in peace processes or people uh, affected by conflict, to support them by doing peace gaming. We know about war gaming, but we should really engage to plan with those affected what uh, true peace means. When you look at the principles, you will also see that this is about economic and social uh, well-being. It's about the social contract. And it's about all the features in society that are the foundation uh, for lasting peace. We hope that 
our peacemaking covenant and our principles will be subscribed to by elites, by governments, and then this can be a way for the young generation to tell uh, their uh, governments and elites that this is the way we want uh, to work and to achieve uh, lasting peace. It's a new generation that really can create it. I've seen movements in so many parts of the world that are creating this in the Sudan, uh, in the Philippines, uh, in Latin America. We showed, showed just the big changes of people who are fed up with the institutions that are, are, are working so far. And you give it an avenue around these principles. It should be a coalition of young people. The first thing that I learned as a young peace builder is that I'm not responsible for the war. I'm not responsible for these crimes. But I am responsible for being professional in my work when I engage in conflict. And these principles are principles that we can hold to and reflect on and we could say, okay, how am I a legitimate actor in a society? How am I promoting inclusion? And just think and set small little goals in the principles and say, I can only do so much. And that little drop is a drop for peace. Peacemaking it needs an act of faith every day. Even when you don't know the way, even, even when it looks so dark, even when the forces against it seem so daunting, uh, that precisely that just means that your act of faith for that day needs to be stronger.